Hey guys, this is Drew Douglas, uh, back in for WordPress for Designers, Day 6. Uh, we're going to move right along where we left off yesterday. And uh, if, if you were watching yesterday, you'll remember that we started breaking up our files and, uh, and really uh, got into how flexible WordPress can be when we, when we um, uh, break up and manage our separate files and then uh, use WordPress functions to call those files uh, when we need to do so. Um, so today we're going to uh, move right along and get into the template hierarchy and um, how to design our single page for our single posts um, for our test blog that we have going right now. So um, again, I want to apologize if um, the, the audio isn't as good as usual. I'm going to try to speak up, but I'm still battling off a little bit of a cold here, but I will do my best. So apologies in advance if... Uh, if you're if you're having any trouble hearing me but I'll I'll do my best to speak up okay so we'll go ahead and uh, load Firefox as always and this is where we left off um, last time you'll remember that we uh, we have our sidebar displaying now um, we have you know the, this is a separate header file with our navigation uh, we have a footer file but one thing we haven't really discussed is when when we click on our actual individual posts is how is this, you know, how is this formatted, and and what template file does it know to use to uh, to style our, our individual uh, posts as opposed to our home page? So let's you know let's check out the uh, WordPress Codex and we'll just Google it WordPress Codex Google template hierarchy. I don't know if I spelled that right. Okay, it's the first link, and we'll click on Template Hierarchy, and, and uh, I'll have all these links for uh, for all of you below. And if we scroll down, we can read a little bit of more about the Template Hierarchy, but we can see a big map here. And this is this is all how WordPress decides what what files you have to, uh, to use in, in order to format a page. Like I said, we're just going to worry about our, our single post, an individual article. So if we scroll down and we see single post display right now, we see that single does trump index. So that means that in order to format our single post, we're, we're going to need to create a single.php file um, for the formatting of our individual posts. Because if we go over to our text editor, right now it is using our index structure that we have here you know any divs that might be here and, and anything that's in, in, is included it, it's using this structure so if we wanted to have a different structure for our single articles we're going to need a single.php page which is what we're going to do today and again I, I will have these links for you um, because it's really a nice read to get to know more about the template hierarchy and, and we'll cover that more you know as we go along but we'll we'll take it slow and and just create our single.php file so by now, um, you should be, you know, pretty familiar with the files that we have going on so far, and we'll just create a new file. We'll call it single.php, and we'll open that up. Okay, now the first thing that we're going to need to do on any page is most likely we're going to need to call our header. And if you remember, there is a function called getHeader. And this is something I want to touch on a little more. Um, we're using get header uh, at the top here to grab our header on our index file. We're using get sidebar. And uh, we're also going to get into the footer some more today. But, but these, these get uh, requests are, there, there are four main files that we can use to shortcut our, our header um, or some of our files and call them with get header or get sidebar and those files are header.php, sidebar.php, footer.php and uh, the comments template which is what we'll cover some more today um, but I just wanted to note that that you can't just uh, you, you, you know you can't create a file called um, advertisements and then say get advertisements it's not it doesn't work like that it there are there are only certain functions that we can use to call files with certain names. So I wanted to make sure I pointed that out so some of you weren't trying to you know, name a file, uh, you know, file2 and then call get file2 in between PHP tags because it doesn't exactly work like that. There's, there's certain uh, pre-setup functions for us um, that we're using. 
so I just wanted to note that before going any farther um, with some of the get calls that we're using. Okay, so for our single.php file, well, the first thing we're going to need to do is call our header, which contains our logo, our you know our doc type, and all of our uh, head uh, information. So we're going to do get header in between PHP tags. Okay, next we're going to grab our sidebar because we still want to display our sidebar information on our um, single page. And since I'm floating it to the right, I'm going to call the sidebar before our information. Okay, now the next thing that we need is to actually grab the individual post. And this is why we went over the WordPress loop a few days ago, is so we could learn how, how we grab out and extract our content from the WordPress database. So first we'll just you know, wrap everything here in a, in a class called oh, single post. And close that off. Okay, and we will start our basic loop. And if you remember the loop, it's all in PHP tags. It's if have posts colon while, which is a while loop, have posts. So why will we have posts? Another colon, grab the post and semicolon and close our PHP tag. Okay now inside we're gonna want to you know we're gonna want to show the title of the post like like we normally would do so PHP and you'll remember the title from when we went over template tags which grabs the title of the current post. We'll grab the title and, um, and for now we'll just grab the entry. We'll come back and add some more so we'll give it a div class of single entry <coughs> excuse me and to clear my throat there div class of single entry and in between that we will put PHP the content which is what actually displays our content and uh, we'll go ahead we'll go ahead and finish off the loop for now and we're gonna come back and, and add a lot of a lot more cool things to our single page so the first thing we need to do is end our while loop and give it an else statement. And now remember, if we don't have, uh, for some reason, someone finds a page or a link breaks and there is no post to display, we want to give a user-friendly message. So we'll do that in between um, after this else, the else statement we've given. So we'll just, you know, we'll do something simple like, oh, you know, um, Sorry, but we could not find what you were looking for. And then, you know, let's let's include our search form. Let's, if you remember, if we go to sidebar, we used PHP get search form when we created our sidebar. So we can just copy that and you know, just just throw it in a div for now. And that way, if we don't have any post to display we can have a search form also show up between our our custom message and the last thing that we need to do is in the loop okay oh, and there's one more thing we're missing and you've probably spotted it last thing is we want to grab our footer and you'll remember that that is get footer okay let's see how that how that does so far. Well, we're not going to be able to tell much of a change, but we can see the whole article here, and it's obviously grabbing our footer. So everything's everything's working as, as we would expect it to, but it's still you know it's kind of plain. And even though we're not worried about the aesthetics, but let's add let's add some more information about this individual post. And once again, we'll be using template tags to uh, to grab some some information about uh, this post. So uh, one we could do is is right above the post before it starts and after the title obviously we could have just display the time and the date that uh, the post was made on so you know just between some emphasis tags just to separate it a little bit. What we'll do is we'll do PHP the time 
and close our PHP. You know, and then we can just before it will write, you know, article posted on. And now in between the time we're going to pass it some parameters. And you can just follow along and I'll explain more about this in a second. We'll do L comma capital F comma lowercase j capital S comma capital Y. And then we'll do at, and now we want to include the time. So PHP, the time. It's all pretty obvious um, naming conventions for these functions, which is nice. And we'll say at the time. OK, so what is LF and then JSY? Well, WordPress has set up uh, time structures for us. And pretty much, d depending on the uh, parameters you pass the time, you can format it in, in, um, in ways that you like. So. If I go back and refresh, you see that we have article posted on, you know, Wednesday, February 4th, 2009 at, you know, 6.20 p.m. So, if, um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a link below, too, so you can learn how to format and pass different uh, parameters to the time. And, and you can really, you know, format it however you want, but I just, that, that's kind of the default way, and I, I, I enjoy reading it that way. So, that, that is how you include the time and the date. And uh, how about some tags? I've I've went ahead and I've included some some uh, WordPress tags with this post. So we'll do PHP, and we want to display the tags after all of our content. So we'll just do PHP the tags. Close that off for now. Okay. And now we need to. Well, um, let's just save it now and see what we got see how the formatting on the tags is right now okay that's pretty good uh, you know it's basic formatting with a comma in between if you uh, if you wanted to pass certain parameters to the tags we could do something like uh, like you, you can find in a lot of themes now you could wrap them in um, you know s some strong tags you could say you know my tags Okay, and then we would obviously do that. Give it a separator, like so. Okay, I think that's right. Let's see if that worked. Okay, it did not. Okay leave it default for, I'll leave it default for now we'll um, we will come we'll come back to that because it, it uh, we won't worry about how to format the tags right now um, obviously I messed up a few of the commas but we'll uh, we'll leave we'll leave the formatting for how for here uh, now because another thing I wanted to go over was um, promoting our article a little bit and how we can automatically have WordPress do this instead of typing it out so let's say we want to uh, have a little note at the end of our all of our individual articles, not on our main page, but on our single um, individual article pages. You know that that encouraged uh, users to maybe subscribe to our to our RSS feed. Let's say so. You know after the tags, let's add a a div class of promote here. And we'll just you know say something like enjoy this article. If you have you know enjoyed this article, please subscribe to our RSS feed. Okay, now we will do open up an anchor tag, and we did this the other day, but it's a nice refresher. And we'll inside for the href, we'll do PHP blog info then inside our quotations rss2 underscore url close our quotation mark there and we'll put rss feed for the text and close our paragraph tag we'll go ahead and save that 
hop on back over to WordPress here and refresh. And you can see I've done you know some very crappy uh, CSS structure just to to point out what we've done here. And uh, around our little border is enjoy this article. If you've enjoyed this article, please subscribe to our feed, and it has a link to our RSS feed, um, which is really convenient. Uh, way to not have to worry about always hand coding something in and, and you can really get pretty creative with that because you can imagine if you wanted to uh, you know ha have a random mess or, uh, or a message or, a or an ad display at the bottom of individual posts only you, know, you could just enter you know just an image SRC tag and uh, and have have your ad or, or any of your sponsors um, show up in the bottom so I think we will leave our single page at that um, but I want to go over one more thing which is um, kind of has to do with the, with the get header and get sidebar things that we that we talked about earlier and let's say that we wanted to include our footer but but we didn't know about get footer Let, or, or let's say we want to include any file you know and obviously there's not a, a get function for that file if, if it's a custom named file so let's get rid of get footer now what we can do with WordPress instead is use a, a preset up keyword known as template path and include our file that way. So instead of get footer, we could do something like PHP. And we'll use a regular PHP include. Now without quotations yet, we'll do template path in all uppercase in one word. Uh, okay, so we'll write template path, and then we will add a period. Now add our quotes, and, and the period is uh, is to continue to add on to the, the the template path. And then we could just do you know footer dot php. So if we had a file named uh, you know file two or sponsors dot php that we weren't wanting to include in our individual articles only, we could use the keyword of template path and include it uh, you know via WordPress that way. So if we save that and refresh, you know, we'll see our, oops, our footer uh, sh should have still shown up, but it, it's not. I must have uh, typed something wrong here. Let's get rid of the slash. Okay, what did I do? Oh, okay. The, what did I type wrong? Ah, we don't have a <laughs> we don't have a footer.php file set up yet. That would be what I did wrong. Well, let's we have time. Let's do that now. W you'll remember that we did this. Let's let's grab everything in our index file from the ending of our HTML L tag all the way up to begin footer. So we'll grab all of our footer information. And we'll erase it, and we will st make a new file and call it footer.php. Open up footer and put all of our footer information into that separate footer file. Now we'll go back to index.php and again just for demonstration purposes you could do get footer but to show you some other options for a different file types you could do template path period oops get some quotes footer.php Save that. It's okay. Same on the next page. Hopefully, I did it right this time. Let's go back to our index page. Okay, there's our footer, and there's our footer. Good. Finally got that figured out. Uh, but yeah, that is a, that is an option. Um, so you know that is a, that is a different way to include any kind of file that you'd like, and not worrying about uh, the path to the file, just the file name. And we can do that using the, the keyword template path here. So we're starting to see some real progress um, with our theme. Of, you know, of course, it's not it looks awful, but but like I've mentioned, we're gonna we're gonna move on to a PSD here pretty shortly, and um, and and really get into some cool some cool things um, and comments we'll get into very shortly, and uh, and getting cust and customizing the loop is uh, is going to be a really cool one that we'll get to. So uh, I encourage you to uh, go to themeforest.net and um, subscribe if you get a chance. 
Well, looks like it's taking long to load, but you guys know how to find it. So subscribe to the RSS feed if you guys are enjoying these articles, and I will see you for day seven. Have a great day. Oh, and happy Valentine's Day, too, to everybody out there. Hope you guys have a great Valentine's Day.